Hello. So today I thought I'd show you another traditional block. I've been having fun with some traditional blocks and this one I believe is called Birds in the Air, although some blocks have more than one name I've discovered. So I'm going to have a little play with Birds in the Air and I started out this time, um, I could have used some two and a half inch squares for these, but then I need this larger triangle here which obviously is larger than two and a half inch squares because I've been doing quite a lot with two and a half inch squares but there's all these wonderful pre-cuts around these days and you can get 10 inch squares so I thought I'd see what I could do with a 10 inch square and it, the 10 inch square works quite well for this block you can actually get two of the blocks from one 10 inch square plus of course your background colour and again I'm using some white for my background so I'll just show you how I get my pieces out of this um, 10 inch square. This is a six and a half inch block so it'll be a finished six inch block just so that you know what size we're working with. So here I've got my 10 inch square. Now they off, off, if you buy a pre-cut they've often got this little pinked edge which is kind of cute but not always helpful. And it's going to be a fairly tight cutting so I'm using the lines on my board to help me line my square up and I've, I know I've got just a very small whisker so I'm actually going to trim off that little tiny bit of pinking but it's absolutely minuscule you can see it's just a little edge just so that I've got a straight edge on the fabric and so I'm going to now line that up with one of the lines on my board and for my large triangle here I'm going to cut a large square that we then cut in half so it's for a six and a half inch block but we need to cut it a little bit bigger than six and a half inches because of cutting it in half to get the seam allowance so I'm going to cut it at you need to add in three eighths of an inch to do that half square to give you that extra little bit of seam allowance so that you can join. And six and seven eighths is an unusual amount to cut, but it's the way it is. So we need to cut it that way because we'll be cutting it in half before we sew it and, and we can't trim it down later so easily. So I'm going to come across six, one, two, three, four, five, six, almost to the seven. Now most rulers have little markings that are one, in, one eighth of an inch, they have markings in one eighth. So I'm going to line up above and below my one eighth mark on what would be the seven inch line from the edge there so that there's just one eighth of an inch sticking into the fabric so that we're going to cut at six and seven eighths. So I've got that lined up, you can just see it's just past the line one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to cut that that way and I'll just continue on cutting that square now so I'm going to again trim off that tiny little edge there and I'm going to come up this way again six and seven eighths one two three four five six and again line up my one eighth marking on that actual line so that one eighth is into the square side cut that off so now I've got and we actually don't need this piece at this stage or at any stage for this block and so now I've got myself a six and, and seven eighths um, square and I'm going to cut that in half diagonally because I only need it as a triangle and as I said you actually can get two blocks from one of these squares so you can act, you've got the two triangles that will make two blocks so we can set those aside now out of the this is the bit that we cut off before. This should now measure um, three inches. Again, I'm going to trim that little um, pinked edge off because we're now going to cut some three inch squares. And you need to cut three three inch squares. So one six and seven eighths inch square and three three inch squares. And you can get this all, if you cut carefully, out of one 10 inch square and, and have a little bit left over for something else. So I'm going to cut here three three inch squares. And they're going to form these half square triangle bits here. And so then with my background color, which in this case I'm using white, um, I need to, again to make make the two blocks to make it uh, go further, you need to have six of these squares. Now I've already drawn my lines on these ready to sew. But I, I'll just run through what I did with my mechanical pencil here. 
Um, I on this particular square, just to show you, I've drawn a diagonal line from point to point. You don't actually need to draw that line unless you want to. On these other ones here, I haven't. I've just got two lines that sit either side of that. Because um, that's going to be the cutting line. That line up the middle is the cutting line. So you don't need to draw it unless you want to. What you do need to do is, on your ruler, if you've got a, a line that's quarter of an inch in from the edge, that's really handy. Because you can line that up with the points on your square and then draw a quarter of an inch away from that line. Then turn this around and line it up again in just the same way so that you've got two and draw your line there so that you've got two lines half an inch apart either side of what would be the diagonal that I have actually drawn in on that square because and these are going to be our sewing lines and we're going to be cutting up the middle so if you want the three lines there's no problem with doing them it's just another line to draw so now we're going to team these up so these are three inch squares we're going to team these up the three of them with these three three inch squares that we've just cut and we're going to sew on those drawn lines so I'll just take these over to the machine here and stitch right along that line and you can chain piece these if you've got them ready you can just feed them through other way. Again on that drawn line. You could just draw the centre line and stitch quarter of an inch away from that, that's another option. I find that I can sit and draw lines perhaps when I'm watching TV or something like that and, and it's all ready to sew, it's not really a trouble to draw those lines and it gives you a nice accurate way of doing things like this. So we just snip those apart now and cut them apart. So now we're going to cut right up that centre so from point to point it should be halfway between your two stitching lines. So this is, is a straightforward block, um, possibly a little bit fiddly but not too bad. And now I'm just going to press these to one side. Now because we've used this size, when we cut the 6 and 7 eighths, that's because you need the 3 eighths of an inch extra to do your half square. And we could have done that with these, but we've cut them at 3 inches rather than 2 and 7 eighths because I have a preferred a preference for trimming my square afterwards to get a slightly better square than when you cut at those um, funny sizes. So a couple of things. One, I don't really like cutting the 7 8 size. And two, I just feel I get a better result in general where, where I can by doing an extra step of trimming. Possibly tedious, but it gives you a nice accuracy. In your squares. So what we need to do now is trim these. So on my ruler I've got a diagonal line here and I'm going to trim them to measure two and a half inches. So I'm going to place that on there so that the diagonal line runs right along and see this is actually sitting a little bit crooked and this happens it doesn't really matter how um, carefully you sew, fabrics move and things sit a little bit crooked. So it's it's big enough, it's sitting in the two and a half inch, and now I'm just going to trim that at two and a half that way, and I'm going to turn it around and trim it. So I'm going along two and a half and down two and a half with my diagonal line sitting right along that diagonal there, and trim off these little bits. So you can see that you're trimming funny uneven little bits off, but what I've now got is a really nice two and a half inch square and uh, I've got to do all the rest of these just so I can show you but I might just do three because we're just doing one block we've got enough here for two blocks 
So trim it. Just it's only a whisker that you're trimming off. Position it with that diagonal and the, your two and a half inch sitting nicely. Trim. And we'll just do one more. So position your diagonal. Make sure your two and a half inch is sitting just within that square so that and trim off a little bit. Turn it round and do it again. And this time you're lining up your two and a half. And I find that although that is a, a little tedious step, that I have definitely prefer to do that rather than working with things that you can see just skew just a little bit as you sew them. I would rather go and, and do that step with those. So we need though we need one of those and we need three of those and then we need also remember we've got enough here for two blocks. I'm actually just going to cut these in half. There doesn't seem to be any way around that that I've come up with at this stage for this block. We need three of these. And I'll cut the other one while I'm here for the other block. So if you're making a larger quilt, having two blocks the same isn't really a problem. Or you could mix the fabrics around, of course. You don't have to make one block out of just the one fabric. But I have chosen to do it that way today. So I've got my large triangle here. And this is what we're trying to make. So we might turn it around the same way. And we're going to have these three triangles over here, which will go along there. But we're going to make up the triangle um, first. So, and these will fit in this way here. So you're seeing it's coming together. So what I'm actually going to do is join them in in rows like this, and make this triangle that will then fit to that triangle. So we'll just take this over to the machine. So these birds in the air are quite busy little birds in the air. Um, but it's a nice block when it's done, and you can set it different ways. And put just a triangle. Now the triangle's going to be a bit bigger because it's from a larger square. You could be running these through and making multiple blocks at the one time if you wanted to rather than just one block at a time. Okay, here's this iron and we'll do a little bit of pressing. that stage and we still need to pop this little fella on here so I'm going to do that next and now I can join that one to that there Okay, now I'm just going to check that measurement because I've used the slightly bigger squares to cut them in half. That's probably going to be just a touch big as I expected it is. So again, we can just, just trim that. I'm going to trim it this way. We're going to, I need the longer ruler. <laughs> All thumbs today. I really just need to trim off a, a, just about an eighth of an inch or slightly less. And get that, a nice straight edge along there 
so that that's going to match our triangle really nicely. So it's really just a little tidy up by, again, by using those slightly bigger, um, the three inch squares rather than cutting them at two and seven eighths. That just gives you a little bit of room to move and just get a nice tidy edge there. And so now I'm going to join that onto there. Now this seam is a little bit harder. You've got to be a little bit more careful because it's on what they call the bias because we've cut diagonally across. That's actually quite stretchy. And these also in the same situation. So you have to be just a little bit careful. You may want to pop a couple of pins in um, just to hold it. You haven't really got any points to match or anything, but just make sure that it doesn't stretch as you go. So this is why we often like to join up um, to make the half square triangle units and things when they're still in a square because it doesn't stretch as much as when you've got this little edge. So just take it nice and gently and that should work quite well for you. And hopefully for me, because you're all watching. Okay, now back to the iron, and we're just about done with our block. So now I'm going to press it, because I've got all these little bulky points here, the seam will want to go that way, and it's very convenient in this case because it goes away from the white. Just going to press that over, and there I have some birds in the air. Now that wasn't too painful, was it? So that can be set. Now, of course, you could set them so that you get different things, you could set the triangles in. There's lots of different ways of playing with that. Um, I have just made a, a quilt just using that block repeated and set all the same way. It doesn't really matter which way you turn it up, it's all the same. So I've, I've used nine blocks. I, I made ten because you make two at a time, so I had a spare which was very convenient. Um, so the, as I said, you could set it differently. There's lots of things you can do with blocks like that. You could make it out of scrappy colours. You don't have to just use one colour in a block. Um, but I just thought we'd go through. I'm really enjoying some of these more traditional ones. And that one is a, as I said, it's a six and a half inch, so it'll finish as a six inch block. So enjoy those birds in the air.